today's uh, video is about uh, rhabdomyolysis and I'm shooting it in a car because I've got no time. Um, anyway, so uh, I had a patient, a friend who's, uh, who's also a runner message me about rhabdomyolysis and how rhabdomyolysis is not something that they used to worry about. Uh, most of my patients, most of my uh, followers are people who are endurance athletes. There are quite a few strength training uh, enthusiasts, but uh, they're the ones who are usually concerned about rhabdomyolysis. Uh, this is the first time we've heard news of uh, a runner collapsing and dying because of rhabdomyolysis and he was only 26 years old and this uh, as far as i know happened during a triathlon or an ultra marathon and uh, so i knew i thought i should make a small video about it so there's there's always going to be people trying to scare you about exercising and uh, it's i have uh, right off the bat let me tell you that Exercising is any day better than being a couch potato. There are risks to everything, but the risks of being a couch potato are much higher than the risk of exercising and something happening to you. Now, exercising to a moderate amount is fine. It's usually when we overstep that it happens. And this overstepping of the exercise can happen because either you're a very type A personality, you, you, you're pushing really hard, you like pushing hard, and uh, it's uh, bettering your previous records is something that is very important to you. So you're always constantly trying to improve, which is a good thing. But when it gets out of hand, you end up in trouble with exercise. And the other thing, if you're using your exercise as therapy, so if you've got if you've got uh, mental issues, <laughs> I don't mean mad. I mean, I mean, if you've got uh, some sort of trauma or some sort of anxiety or some sort of anger management issue that you are treating yourself using exercise, that is another risk factor for over-exercise and injury. So that's broadly about exercise and injury. Um, about rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis, the, what is basically happening is muscle breakdown. And there's two ways it can happen. One is when uh, the muscle actually gets crushed. So you can have, have it when there's a massive road traffic accident or somebody who's fallen under a heavy weight and their muscles get crushed. And the muscle con contains lots of um, structural proteins and these structural proteins are meant to stay inside the muscle cell. But once they, once they, once you rupture the muscle cell and you release these structural proteins, then the it becomes a problem for the kidney because the kidney now has to filter out these uh, these structural proteins that are not supposed to be found in blood, anyways. And if it's a small quantity of muscle that has been damaged, then uh, there's usually a very small quantity of that uh, structural protein that's released into the blood and so the kidney can deal with it easily. So during exercise, muscle gets damaged and it does release some structural protein and that structural protein will get filtered through the kidneys. It's only when the capacity of the kidney gets overwhelmed that you end up with rhabdomyolysis. Now the structural protein that is uh, implicated in rhabdomyolysis is called myoglobin and uh, and uh, the larger the quantity of muscle that is damaged the larger the quantity of myoglobin is released into the blood and the larger the load the on the kidney so rhabdomyolysis is dangerous to the kidneys and once you lose your kidneys once you damage your kidneys it's very difficult to come back so how does it happen so in the past rhabdomyolysis used to be associated with um, interval training with heavy loads so things like crossfit where where we where we used to uh, do hundreds of reps of uh, high weights uh, very fast with no rest and uh, this uh, this used to cause a lot of muscle breakdown and this used to lead to a lot of muscle soreness and the next day they'll end up with a surplus of myoglobin in their blood and this would then cause rhabdomyolysis now it doesn't usually happen in um, in uh, in cardio uh, endurance exercises because the intensity of the work and the amount of load on the muscle is not high enough to cause structural damage to the muscle unless they're pushing really hard. Now, 
um, you can have problems with rhabdomyolysis if you are in the anaerobic zone. If you're if you're spending so much time in the anaerobic zone and you're building so much lactic acid that the pH in the muscle cell drops so much and the muscle cell breaks down because of a chemical stress, the biochemical stress, the uh, acidosis stress, then the, you can have you can have uh, um, rhabdomyolysis. So if you're spending most of your exercise duration in the aerobic zone, uh, you are okay. If you are going for a lactic acid threshold kind of run, then you need to make sure that it is not prolonged because there are very determined people who can push past pain, who can ignore the pain and push really hard even when they are in severe lactic acidosis. And it's the acidosis during uh, cardiovascular endurance type uh, events that causes the rhabdomyolysis. Now, the second way in which uh, rhabdomyolysis can happen in an endurance type uh, in, in an endurance type uh, event is when there is a lot of impact. So, if you are descending, if you are coming downhill and you are you're moving really fast and you are putting a lot of strain on your quads and your hamstrings and your glutes, those are big muscles and they are absorbing the impact of your uh, stride. And uh, this will cause structural muscle damage. The The muscle uh, tissue will actually have structural damage and that can release myoglobin and that can cause problems. So there's two ways in which you can cause trouble. Uh, uh, rhabdomyolysis. By, one is by the biochemical load that you put on the muscle. And the second is by the uh, actual physical trauma of repeated pounding. And that usually happens in downhill events and if you're going too fast. If you're sprinting uphill, it's not much of a problem. Now, these are, um, technically, this is how rhabdomyolysis happens. Now, you can cause, it also depends on the person's fitness. Now, um, one person's mus- a person who's really fit and has really strong muscles and a really strong cardiovascular system with really good vascularity in that muscle, they can push their muscles harder without breaking those muscles down. And they will not get rhabdomyolysis as easily as somebody who's unfit. Somebody who's unfit, who's not used to exercise, can produce rhabdomyolysis much easier. So if you're... Uh, if, if you are running on adrenaline, if you are running on enthusiasm, if you are running on willpower and not on pure fitness, then you are at a higher risk of injury, you are at a higher risk of rhabdomyolysis. Though I find it hard to believe that somebody who is training regularly for ultramarathons uh, and triathlons will be so unfit as to cause rhabdomyolysis just by running. The other the other way that you can make rhabdomyolysis, the risk of rhabdomyolysis higher and the complications of rhabdomyolysis higher, if you are is if you are exercising in extremely hot climates and if you are dehydrated. Uh, so if you are dehydrated and the muscles are not functioning properly, if the muscle cells are not getting enough nutrients, if they are not getting enough oxygen, you can have rhabdomyolysis. Now, if you run out of, if the muscle runs out of uh, energy cellular energy so so the muscle needs energy to relax not to contract i'm 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 being i'm not making a mistake here so the muscle contracting is an automatic process the muscle relaxing is an active process unless there are enough atp stores inside the muscle uh, it will not relax now a muscle that is so a muscle that is pushed hard and completely empties itself of ATP, um, it is not going to relax. It is going to stay contracted. And a contracted tight muscle will not uh, will not relax enough to let in new blood or new oxygen or new electrolytes or new energy. So you can push a muscle so hard that it tightens up and doesn't relax. And this is what happens in a cramp. Now, doesn't mean that you'll get rhabdomyolysis if you get a cramp. But if you're if you're getting cramps all over your body, you have pushed really hard, your energy stores are really low and you are at risk. If you have a small area that's cramping, you're not going to get rhabdo. You will be causing slight muscle damage, but it's not going to cause rhabdo.
but if you've got cramps that are throughout the body and that that can be a high risk for rhabdomyolysis uh, so i think some of you uh, runners might have experienced it in hot weather you've pushed hard you've run well and towards the end you've got cramps everywhere it's not just in the legs you got cramps in the shoulders cramps in the back cramps in the hamstrings quads uh, gastrocnemius all of those muscles are cramping that is usually a kind of a high risk situation for problems like uh, rhabdomyolysis um if you don't have enough electrolytes the same thing will happen the the muscle will contract and not let go and again rhabdomyolysis um so so this is how you can cause rhabdomyolysis now how to prevent it is it's what i said you just re- reverse engineer it so don't push too hard if if it's a race and uh, you're not in the running for a gold medal or a silver or a bronze don't push too hard run for fun run for enjoyment run for health don't push hard enough for something like a personal best or any of those kind of uh, shallow reasons um make sure you're fit enough and make sure that you have trained at the pace that you are planning instead of simply pushing as hard as possible under race conditions because under race conditions you are extra um, motivated and you will push harder than necessary so then the other thing is make sure that you're hydrated make sure that your fueling is up to the mark make sure that your electrolytes are up to the mark and then if you are in hot conditions you are at higher risk so you'll have to slow down further and then the next thing that you can do is post race you can hydrate yourself extra of course when you hydrate yourself make sure that you are also getting electrolytes post race the other thing that you can do is you can you can spend some time um uh, with recovery methods with uh, uh, massage with uh, uh with cold showers with uh, with a recovery run the next day a recovery run has to be slow it shouldn't be extra fast and if you have symptoms of rhabdo which is uh, dark colored urine cola colored urine is what they say if that has started to occur you are already in trouble so yeah um and rhabdomyolysis is diagnosed by symptoms but it can be dem- uh, it can be diagnosed much earlier if you look at the blood tests so if you are worried about that you should be going to a hospital and you should be checking your creatinine kinase uh, levels uh, to make sure that your um that your muscles are in breaking down and most people have a good instinct for it but if you have any sort of doubt you should be getting to hospital rather than bracing it out and sitting at home saying i'll be okay so yeah it it is a dangerous condition and uh, if you know that you've pushed extra hard and that the conditions have been hot you've not been hydrated properly your electrolytes haven't been up to the mark then maybe and if you're worried about that condition you should go and get it checked in a lab in a hospital so if you've got any further doubts please post them in the comments and i'll try and make follow up videos on it thank you